We've got the author in the chat room or the Zoom John waiting room. John is his name. <laughs> John? John. John McDermott. So this is John uh, who wrote this article. I'll pull it up right here. Uncovering the Higher Truth of Jay Shetty by The Guardian. And here he is dressed like... What is this outfit, man? It's like he's wearing... Doesn't this look like a like 70s disco outfit? Like, what is he doing? Idiot. What are you wearing, He looks man? good. Even that pisses mm. me off. <laughs> the hands are a bit robotic. <laughs> yeah. Loosen up. They're nice and big, though. Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Uncovering the Higher Truth of Jay Shetty. Now, this is a profile by... Uh, John McDermott, and it is a long, this guy who dived in deep, hmm. um, and it covers a lot of ground, and there's lots of good uh, stuff and a few negative stuff, mm. so what we're going to do today is completely ignore all the good stuff, which is probably like, what, 90, 80 or 90 percent of it, would you say? Yeah. Or neutral stuff. Neutral, I'd say about, yeah, 80 percent maybe. So we're going to ignore all that. Makes sense. Look at that Austin Powers get up right there. Why is he wearing this stuff? Is yeah, baby. Jacket? Yeah. This is his fit in my uh, in the cardboard cutout that we have here. Yeah, baby. Oh shit. <laughs> iconic look. That's an iconic look. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> um, is he in the chat? Uh, I'll let him in right now if you're ready. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, stand by. And let me just get this connected up. Here he is in the People's Choice Award, Santa Monica, California, at another award show. Man. Don't you have some monks to inspire? <laughs> he called him the Tom Cruise of Krishna. <laughs> All right. We have uh, John on the line. John, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you guys. What'd you say? Hello. John, I hope you're not maligning Jay Shetty today. That's what you said his last name is, right? What? You said malign. Uh, what? McDermott. What yeah, not, not anywhere close to the word malign. What's, his, <laughs> what's your last name, John? <laughs> McDermott. Hey, my name is John. My name is John McDermott. We oh. actually we met before, Ethan. You and I. Yo. Ooh. Met met. I remember. Like, it's all connected. Yeah, I profiled you years ago. Remember for wait, Mel Magazine. Wait, 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 wait. We met. I interviewed you for like three hours. No oh, fucking way. Oh my god. <laughs> no shot. No shot. No shot. I'm sat with you. For Take three no offense, hours? Ethan. Memory. Was it is a call? Fish like. It was a call. Okay. Ethan, I profiled you for Mel Magazine. I wrote a story about you. It's very early in both of our years. This was probably mm -hmm. like probably maybe online, eight but years I still ago. don't believe it. <laughs> was it nice? It was nice. I was Thank a fan. You. Thank <laughs> you. you were, huh? Yeah. <laughs> where what where'd I lose you? <laughs> Today. I was the switch from, you know, live streamers. I couldn't keep I can't keep up with the live streams, you know? Yeah. I, I've got work to do. I understand. Day, yeah. Well, um, That's very John, good. thanks for but, calling and in. Jay Shetty has brought us back together. Absolutely. <laughs> all roads, mm -hmm. all roads all leads all back to Jay. Building. So thank you for calling in, first of all. I don't know if you know that we've had somewhat of a silly, um, <laughs> kind of lighthearted uh, obsession with Jay Shetty. Um, so I've, I'm like dialed in. I think I'm the only one that's ever called into question his credentials, his character, his um, the color of motivations, his, eyes. his eye color. <laughs> yeah, his eye color, we suspect, may be a procedure. You know, it wouldn't shock me. The levels that he's gone to, to to deceive and his levels of dishonesty, it wouldn't shock me at all if he were wearing contacts or wow. even got some type of cosmetic procedure for his eyes. Ooh. So tell, tell, tell me, walk me through the process of being assigned or deciding to write this story and kind of where you started and um, and yeah. did it end up where you expected or what was the journey like? Yeah, and uh, I'm glad you asked this question because when I really started to dig into Jay and discover a lot of stuff that made it into the investigation, his publicity team tried to kind of portray me as some kind of obsessed mm. fan or obsessed hater. That would be me. I uh -huh. did yeah. <laughs> I did not know who Jay Shetty was until his publicity team invited me to write about him oh. for Esquire magazine. Oh. So, oh, so they invited you. Yes, wow. absolutely. He was doing publicity for his new book, the book that came out. Uh, he either came out early 2023 or very late, like late December 2022. But 
early 2023, he came out with Eight Rules of Love, and he was going on a book tour for it. And I was a contributor to Esquire. I had written a profile about another self-help influencer that is represented by the same PR agency that represents Jay. Mm. So they email Esquire and they were like, hey, we have this other client of ours. He has a new book coming out. He's going on tour. We liked what John did with our other client. Would you, would he be willing to come out to the LA show and cover his book? My editor asked me if I was up for it. And uh, I wasn't too hip on it, but sometimes, you know, a gig is just a gig. And that's what I went in, into mm-hmm. it thinking. I was like, you know, I'm just going to go execute this assignment and work on something else. So I will admit when I first met Jay, I was a little unprepared. I made it like 75% of his way through his second book, had not read his first book. Uh, met with Jay at a hotel in Santa Monica, kind of right on the beach. He was staying in a swanky hotel. We had lunch. We did an interview. And my initial kind of thought and my initial kind of take on this piece was that we're now kind of living culturally through this moment where Western capitalism is kind of subsuming all of this Eastern spiritualism and kind of watering it down and it's kind of being mixed in with influencer culture and kind of wellness culture and just kind of like a take on the entire wellness space and how it's got some kernels of truth to it, but it's kind of mostly bullshit. But my impression of Jay at that time were that he was just kind of corny. You know, I just thought he was kind of lame, which, you know, it's not a crime, <laughs> but I did not expect that it would go this deep. So I think, it, you know, I, I think I was like, all right, well, maybe I'll make fun of him a little bit in this profile. But then I go to his live show and I was pretty appalled by what he did at his live show. And that's what wow. kind of. I didn't even know he did a live show. There. So what is his live yeah. show like? It's first of all, it's more than three hours long. It's close to three and a half hours long. There was an intermission. It's him on stage just kind of doing a variety show, but with a self-help twist. So the first segment, he opened it with a rap, which I don't know if you know. He rapped? Jay. His, a rap? Yes. Oh, I remember he kind has of a like, microphone tattoo. Yeah. His original aspiration in life was to be a rapper. Oh. Um, Before or after yeah, them. This was like, so if you go in the article I show, one piece of evidence I unearthed is this really old YouTube video of him rapping at a Hare Krishna event when he was 18. <laughs> Yo, can you pull that? <laughs> it's so, so he got it pulled from the internet mm-hmm. during the course of my reporting, but there's a web archive link that is linked mm-hmm. in the piece and that should be able to pull open the, uh, nice. the video. Love so, that. Yeah. He's wearing, I, I think he's wearing like a shady aftermath t-shirt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's like on stage rapping. I think he wanted to be Eminem, you know, mm. he wanted to be a rapper. So uh, where was he going with this? So oh, you so at the the, show. you're at the live show. Yeah. And he did something right. that you show. found gross. Uh, yeah, he did a couple of things I found to be kind of gross. He brought this woman on stage and he was, you know, talking about, you know, distraction and how we can't be present become of our, because of our phones. Again, really kind of basic, unoriginal stuff that you can find anywhere, which is Jay's M.O. Um, And he's like, well, to demonstrate, you know, the need to be present, I'm going to put you in this sensory deprivation chamber. And on stage, he had kind of um, kind of de facto sensory deprivation chamber, just kind of black curtains in this box. And he put this woman in there and put noise canceling headphones on her and just made her sit in there while we watched from a live feed, just Mm. watching this woman kind of uncomfortably fidget inside the sensory deprivation chamber before you know, 3,000 people. Did she theater. know that you guys were watching? I don't think he even told her that. Oh, that's if weird. If I'm remembering yeah, correctly, that's pretty he odd. didn't even... Yeah, I was like, that's kind of bizarre. And then the thing that really found me, really struck me as exploitive and inappropriate was that he asked the question to the audience. He was like, you know, who, who's someone here who's been having trouble with a relationship in their life? And... That could be anybody, right? Like everyone has trouble. Sure, yeah. The relationship, yeah. So he brings this woman on stage and she tells this, you know, very moving, sad story about how she's been estranged from her brother for years. They haven't talked. And then Jay makes her call her brother on stage in front of everyone. Whoa. Oh, that's a Tony Robbins thing. I fucking very hate Tony that. Ro- yeah. I, I hate very Tony that. Ro- yeah. That's so gross. Whoa. 
And I guess it was supposed to be a lesson in confronting things that you're avoiding. Uh, hmm. Anyway, but I, I thought it was pretty bizarre. So the call goes to voicemail, and Jay takes her phone. Oh, my God. Hits, hits call cancel and immediately recalls the same number to try to get this guy to answer. I mean, he took the phone. He did this himself through her phone. Doesn't pick up again. And then Jay instructs this woman to leave a voicemail, and we just – Listen to this woman pour her heart out to her brother, who she's been estranged from for years. And uh, it was deeply uncomfortable. I distinctly remember the woman who was sitting two seats to my right. She audibly said, she said, this is mortifying. Wow. I had to agree. So I talked to some other people who had been going to, who had gone to that show and were fans of Jay's previously. And they said, I didn't enjoy it. The vibes were all off. It had very much kind of a Joel Austin kind of mega church somewhere in rural Colorado kind of vibe. Yeah. Uh, but people, a lot of people ate it up. The people I was friends with were pretty, had my similar feelings. So then I was like, well, what do we know about this guy? And I started to mm. look online. And that's when things really kind of took That's off. very interesting. Mm. So the, the uncomfortability that you got on the sh watching his live show was the motivation for you to dig uh, and ask questions more about who this guy was. Yeah, I I yeah. hate that that Tony Robbins shit. Like Tony Robbins made this um documentary, this is an aside, but for Netflix, mm -hmm. it was supposed to be super inspiring. Yeah. And I found it so creepy and I was right. like, "Wow, this guy is fucking sick." Like really. And he does his whole shit is doing like exactly like you described. Which is like, um, it's like putting people on the spot <coughs> and with something that should be so personal, and yeah. they, there's so much pressure on them. Well, it's also yeah. all fake, because like you, he'll be like, "Yeah, call and make and resolve the issue with your husband or whatever," and like he, they're gonna resolve it on the phone because like it's really awkward and weird, right. and there's like a surge of emotion, adrenaline, and stuff. But it's not gonna fix the problem. Like I even we followed up on some of these cases. And like, it doesn't f ever fix anything. Mm -hmm. The people, they'll end up back on the same track as they were. Yeah. It's not real. Totally. Yeah. And when you're up on that stage, you don't want to be the one who ruins the show right. by not going along with it. Right. So they pressure these people into doing these kind of dis public displays of emotion, which to your point are ineffective <clears throat> and not appropriate to begin with. So, anyway, so then I start looking into his background. And one thing... You know, one thing that kind of stuck out to me was that in reading his book, you know, here's this guy who markets himself as a monk, but mm -hmm. then you read his book, so little of the content of his book is about his time as a monk or anything that he learned there. It is all just pop psychology that he's pulled from elsewhere mm -hmm. and that you can find from any other number of sources. He's mm -hmm. just basically an aggregator. He's when just a... He's a fucking BuzzFeed list. And, wow. and you're, talk, you're talking about Think Like a Monk. Well, I actually read his second book first mm -hmm. because that was the one that was new at the time and that's the one that I was supposed to read covering, be covering. Uh, and that one's about, uh, you know, how to better manage your relationships. It's called Eight Rules of Love. But I subsequently read his first book and, you know, I have them right here. I, you know, I don't think like I'm, I'm on the live stream, but I can show you my extremely heavily annotated versions of both of his books where I just kind of painstakingly went through every single claim that he made about himself. Wow. Which was kind of part of the investigation. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, can you see me right now? Ethan? Yeah. Everyone can see you. Yeah. Can you not see oh, us? Yes, just making sure. Can you see me? I can see you. I wasn't sure if I was oh. on the, oh, yeah, yeah, on yeah, the yes, live yes, stream. Yes, yeah. Yes, every, yes, everybody yes. can see everything. <laughs> except so this you. is my, this, oh, wow. this is my copy of okay. Okay. Love. You did deep reading. Yeah, that's a lot of annotations. Reading. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> that's a that represents a lot of hours of work, huh? I mean, I've been working on this legitimately for <sighs> nearly a year. Whoa. And so So anyways, uh I start to look online and then I come across Nicole Arbor's video. Uh I don't know if you know the Nicole Arbor video that was released, I want to say 2020 Wait, or Nicole 2019. Arbor. Isn't that the girl who, yeah, like a YouTuber? She's like a YouTuber. She's a YouTuber, yeah. Wait, what, what happened yeah. with Nicole Arbor and what? Jay Shetty? She was the first person to call out Jay Shetty. 
Oh. What? Yeah, she had, had the no video idea. from four wait, years ago. No. Being like, he's full of shit. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that I, is, wait, hold I, on. I watched Nicole some of it Arbor, she, she a trailblazer on hating Jay Shetty? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I, sent, I sent the link. Yeah. I mean, no yeah. shot. She was like, uh, when I was coming up, everyone was just like shitting on her. Yeah, for being what like, was it for? I she forget. Made, she made a video like, uh, Dear Fat People, one of those things, where she's like, you're fat and everybody hates you because you're right. fat and you suck. Yeah. And we're like, geez, yeah, she has a, for no reason. She has a controversial past of her. Right. <clears throat> but four years but, ago, here it is, sure enough, Jay Shetty is full of shit with 50% downvotes. People are riding for <laughs> their boy. Yeah, I'm one yeah. of them as a fan. <laughs> but, you know, she pointed out some very clear examples of jay being a rampant plagiarist really? and that's what really pink wow me. yeah you know plagiarism makes me so upset and i don't know why culturally we're so quick to excuse it i don't know why people gave fuck jerry a free pass i don't oh, know why yeah. they gave the fat jewish a free pass yeah it's those just guys so suck. i mean Ethan, you can attest to this it's so difficult to make a career as a creative professional the idea that you're going to build your career by stealing other people's original work and passing mm -hmm. it off as your own, it's, it really rubs in the wrong way. <laughs> I hate, also, by the way, I made yeah. a whole um, video essay about fuck Jerry like a few years ago. I hate that guy. That guy sucks so bad. Yeah, they're all there's, fucking terrible. But, and re recently there's that video that came up. Uh, what was his channel where he, he made a video exposing so many channels on YouTube that uh, H bomber guy's video. Yes, H yeah. bomber guy. Yeah. Oh, did you see that the H bomber guy about plagiarism? You would love that. Yes. No, but you should I would definitely love you should, watch that. You should it's... check it out. So many channels <coughs> will just do like video essays, and the whole thing is just plagiarizing other sources, like word for word. Just, yeah, word for yeah. word. But here's the problem: is by the time you know the fat Jewish or fuck Jerry to get found out, or in this case Jay Shetty, they're already so famous mm -hmm. that they can retain their following. Yeah, and then they can. They can revert to creating some original content where they can revert to, you know, still using other people's content, but giving them credit, which is still kind of an ethical and legal gray area. And by that time, everyone's like, all right, well, you know, they made some mistakes when they were younger, right. but it's fine. But it's like, but they never would have gotten that famous had they not done that in the first place. Mm -hmm. So, but aside from. Well, I'm not familiar the, with the yeah. plagiarism claims. Like, how, what was he stealing? Just other people's social media posts, or you know, famous people's quotes, and did you did you pull up receipts for that? Yeah. So hold on, we actually saved a bunch of examples because I'm I'm quite curious. Sure. I want, you know, let's see, Jay Shetty. If you want J uh, daily inspiration, come and find me on Instagram. Most people don't start because they don't want to be seen starting at the bottom. Don't be most people. So so what did he steal in this? AB? So scroll. That's July, <laughs> and then if you go a month earlier down below in June, this. Person mm -hmm. tweeted basically the same thing. Or most people never start because they don't want to be seen starting from the bottom. That's like verbatim. Yeah. So a year later, he or was it a month later? A month later, he just ripped <clears throat> it word for word. That's crazy. Totally. I mean, just <coughs> so is it the verbatim same verbatim plagiarism? So it's, did you find that it's the same in his book, like the self help stuff? No. By that time, so this happened before the book. By that time, by the time he was writing the book, he had gotten better about crediting mm. other sources. Mm -hmm. But the thing that kind of pinged my radar about that is that it's so easy to get caught plagiarizing online. Mm -hmm. It does, was it though, for when he was doing this, it felt like you could get away with it. But now as technology yeah. and people have become more yeah. keen to it, mm -hmm. then everybody who did it is getting busted now. Absolutely. So, but... Even if at the time some people were getting away with it, you have to think that it's so incredibly easy to pull up this post, pull up that post, show them side by side, yeah. go the respective mm -hmm. timestamps, and then it's very clearly an act of plagiarism. So my thought process was, well, if he was willing to plagiarize so brazenly, what else is he willing to lie about? Sure. And that's when it really kind of kicked into high gear. <laughs> I found all these Reddit threads from people there were anonymous, but people claiming, hey, I'm from Jay's religious community. I know him personally. He's full of shit. He's Whoa. as fraudulent as it gets. And I started reaching out wow. to them. And that's when it kind of entered a, a new phase. Whoa. I want to read this one. Here he plagiarized Tony Robbins, which is <laughs> interesting. As we know, he stole his yeah. uh, whole shtick. Tony well, Robbins. Yeah. flow, man. Tony Robbins. <laughs> 
Uh, Tony but, Robbins has got gigantism, and, and, he, and Jay Shetty has the eyes. <laughs> you need a twist, like a physical twist. <laughs> Do what you did in the beginning of a relationship, and there won't be an end, said Tony Robbins. Jay Shetty said, Do what you did at the start of your relationship, and there won't be a finish. <laughs> oh, okay, so he, he, changed, he changed two, two words. words. <laughs> you know. Yeah, he changed, he changed the name. <laughs> here's another but here's one. the thing. Tony and Jay are friends. This ah. is Jay is just a symptom of a systemic issue, mm -hmm. which is that this whole kind of wellness influencer industry, they all just kind of pass each other around on each other's podcasts. They support each other. That's why no one wanted to speak out about Jay, because mm -hmm. they're all in on the hustle together. Yes. Yeah. He shows up on their po podcast. They show up on his podcast. What do you they think? get a little bit bigger. He gets more legitimate. And it, it's all just a, a big hustle for Ooh. all of these people. What yeah. do you have any thoughts on this dude Darman who he who I've <laughs> I've flagged down as a being a kind of a weird shady dude and also with a with a dubious background too and and where he comes from um and they're like best friends and they do a podcast together Oh they still do a podcast together Or I don't know if they still do I think they I think, do I think that they do I'll I'll yeah. verify but at least as of a few months ago cuz we Yeah do you, about it. do you know, know Yeah yeah I know Darman had uh, held up Jay Shetty and kind of helped launch his career early on. Mm. Um, but I, I did not know who Darman was until <laughs> I started looking into Jay Shetty. Again, this was an entire world that I yeah, was... Yeah, you should look into Darman next yeah. if you're looking for an assignment. Cause that guy's a weirdo <laughs> too. But this is funny. He goes, um, this one is just a, like an anonymous quote. I think people forget that having an experience doesn't have to mean skydiving, going to every contract, or partying until 1, 5 a.m. It can be a meaningful talk with someone you love on a quiet Saturday night. And now here he wrote, he rewrote it, but he put his, he wrote his fucking name in <laughs> to the meme. Yeah. He would put his name and sometimes his watermark he, on there as, you know, as if it was a Jay Shetty original. He changed <laughs> the day as well. Oh, uh, that's, oh, so it's original. It's yeah. a Friday night, Friday not night. Saturday. <laughs> Friday's good. That's smart. That's good. I feel that on Friday. He said, having experience doesn't have to be skydiving, doing drugs, or partying until 4 a.m. It can be a deep conversation on a quiet Friday night. Man, it's incredible how little he changed it. He yeah. just doesn't, he didn't give a single fuck. There was another really good video I watched early on that inspired me to take a deeper look. And that was by uh, Kaya's World, another YouTuber. K-E-Y-A. Uh, if you look at that one, that one's actually very well done. She is a... Uh, She's a former journalist by trade, newspaper journalist who has started her own channel, kind of mm. calling out the wellness industry and just Ooh. the various people within it. But well, that that well, one was uh, influential. Jay Shetty is a fraud. Too. This one? He used to be a man, yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. It doesn't have a lot of views. This is from a year ago. It doesn't. She does great work and does not mm. does not have a viewership that reflects the quality of her Well, work. let's give her a shout out. Kaya's world jay shetty is a fraud because you know he's got that youtube he's got his he's got his finger on the faucet man he says uh-uh to that video he whispers in the ceo's weir uh, you know because he's at everyone's wedding he's doing brisses totally. now did you know that <laughs> he's doing what he's doing brisses now <laughs> he's he's you know he, now he's, 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 influencer he's well mixed too. in to every damn thing man it's crazy he did officiate I mean, a lot he of weddings interviewed, he interviewed the fucking president of the united states <laughs> He interviewed Biden in the White House. Yeah. Like an extended sit down interview. Biden does not give mm. exclusive interviews anymore because he's old as shit. Because of his age yeah. and yeah. he's so prone to gaps. But Jay Shetty got to sit in the Oval Office next to President mm -hmm. Biden and get an exclusive interview with him about the administration's mental health initiatives when Jay has no mental health qualifications. I mean, I can't. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. Yeah, his. The first time I noticed this guy was two years ago, was it? When he beat us for a, a streamy award for best podcast. Yeah. I was like, who the fuck is Jay Shetty? And why is he beating me? <laughs> and I just, I was like, wow, okay, this guy Jay Shetty. The next year, he's nominated again, same category, beats me again. That's when the war begins. <laughs> Not just against yeah. Jay, but the entertainment, the, uh, this, I've killed a man, uh, but... <laughs> They'll never find yeah. at me. Um, but you know, anyway, Ethan, um, I, I, I thought about you early in my investigation yeah. because I found so Jay actually has two YouTube channels. He has the one first podcast, which is very popular, but he has a less popular one that is just his personal channel. Uh huh. 
And on his personal channel, he has a video about how to read a book a week. Ty and Lopez. it reminded me of Ty Lopez. Totally. Yes, one of your <laughs> one of your early targets. Well, he, but if you watch the you watch the video of Jay, his keys to reading a book a week are to not read the book. He just tells you how to skim through a That's book. Ty. That That's was Ty. Ty yeah. That's basically what he's not said to How do you not Jay read or New York? <laughs> He's a New York Times best-selling author telling you, like, oh, yeah, you don't have to read this shit. I mean, just fucking oh like, you're right. and, and at least <laughs> just fucking skip through it. You know, Ty Lopez <laughs> is the guy that bought Radio Shack. Uh, you know, like, there, they, nobody's really taking him that seriously. Wait, is that legitimate? He did. He, he bought, bought Radio, Radio Shack, Shack and turned it into a cryptocurrency. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't even know what it means, but he did. <laughs> he bought it for, like, $15 million because they were about to go bankrupt. I it, it's interesting you bring it, yeah. Mm. Go ahead. You know. I have a question for you. I yeah. always feel like self-help <laughs> people in general, and I will generalize in this case, I feel like they're always all a fraud. And that's a hard statement. But do you, because you said you, you wrote about another guy before. Do you... uh, it was a woman named Tinks. Okay. Again, somebody who wasn't really on my radar until I got an assignment from her. And look, I'm not against self-help every single self-help influencer. Do I believe there are people out there that can help people? Sure, absolutely. But I think if you are going to pose yourself as someone who teaches life lessons, who teaches you how to live a better life, then the bar for you should be exceptionally high. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Jay, he marketed himself dishonestly. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because one piece of criticism and kind of defense of Jay that I keep getting is people are like, well, so what? So, you know, he misrepresented his past. He's still out there helping people. So what? And I I find that piece of criticism so baffling because the implication is that it's okay to lie to get it. Yeah. It's okay to lie to achieve a goal, Mm -hmm. which is in of itself kind of a ethically complex kind of idea, but it's kind of crazy when you're somebody who, markets yourself as this virtuous holy man Mm -hmm. and meanwhile you're being dishonest about who you are i just i can't believe people's standards for their you know spiritual gurus would be so low Mm -hmm. i i i tend to agree with you Ela. my thing with self-help people is like no i don't i feel that nobody's really saying anything unique ever but the part the whenever i get the red flag and a lot of it's self-apparent you know but whenever I get the red flag, it's when they start selling these courses. And Jay, yeah. I didn't know until recently, he's selling courses. Mm. He's selling oh, seminars. Boy, is he selling courses. And he's selling university, mm-hmm. fake credentialed universities. So one, you know, to my earlier comment about when a lot of people would respond, they'd be like, all right, well, what's the harm being done? So he's lied a little bit. You know, Eli, I got a lot of people saying the same thing you said. It's like, all these people are full of shit. Mm. Who cares if there's another bullshit self-help person? But when you are charging people $7,000 yeah. for a That's life a coaching lot. course based on fraudulent claims about who you are, that is yeah. material harm being done. And not only was he being dishonest about his own qualifications, he was being falsely advertising the legitimacy of the school. And once I found this out, mm. then things were really kicked into high gear. So <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have, I've got that video of him rapping. Of the, oh yeah, that might be fun to watch here. Here it is. One sec. MC M- Remy D. Oh, MC Remy D. <laughs> My boy. Let's, <laughs> let's see it. Spit. Spit. <laughs> I think that's a shady aftermath. I wait, can't see yeah. that. wait, is he? It's not a Slim Shady shirt. Yeah, Sh- Shady Aftermath, I believe. Was oh, that's clothing. a Slim Shady? Yeah, that's yeah. his clothing. Oh, brand. he's definitely doing Slim Shady. Uh. Mom's I, spaghetti. I can't, see, I can't make out the Aftermath, but it obviously says Shady in the bigger yeah. screen. Mm. So, a note about this video. Uh, I okay. want to make a note. Go ahead. So, this video is from summer of 2006. Oh, wow. Jay has repeatedly claimed that he had never met a monk until 2007. Liar! And we got this video. Him. Obviously, <laughs> obviously refutes that. Maybe he never turned around. Maybe that we was the him. only monk in the building. The guy playing the violin, and he never turned around. <laughs> He's behind we him. Look, well, you keep watching the video. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe, maybe it disproves it. 
Oh shit. Yo. Yeah. No way. That, did, have you have you read the lyrics like every word he says? No, I have not. I haven't gone. We got to annotate this. Mm -hmm. Can we get an AI on this? I actually want to know all the words. <laughs> I think it's important. See what we can do. I, I, the audio is pretty muddy. I found that shirt in the back of it. it says "Trust Us." Yeah, it is a oh, it is a shady shirt. Okay. We found it. The shizzle. Yeah. So where we I need to hire you guys as research assistants. Yeah. You guys are good. Yeah, great. we're fast. We're good. And they, yeah. they're working overtime on my ass. They, gotta, <laughs> they have the hardest job in the world. Um, where did this take place, this freestyle? It was at France. So mm. in Jay tells this origin story that he was totally uninterested in spiritualism. He didn't, didn't have any type of spiritual life until one day when he's a freshman at the university uh, uh, at Cass Business School. Cass has since changed its name because the guy Cass was involved in the slave trade. So it's now Bay's Business School. But he's a freshman at Cass, and a monk comes to give a lecture at the school. And Jay is so incredibly in awe of this monk that he decides, you know what? This business life, that's not what I want. I want to go learn from this man. And that's what kind of sets him off on his you know, spiritual journey, right? Mm -hmm. The problem with that story is that Jay grew up in the religious organization that the monk is from. He didn't meet a monk for the first time mm -hmm. when he was uh, at university as a freshman. And this is, again, documented in the piece, which I found documentary of evidence showing to the con that contradicts that story, that video being one of them. So... The summer before he went to university, which is when that video takes place, he went on a, kind of like a youth group retreat through that religious organization to France. Oh, so and that was, religion, yeah. Wow. So he's deeply embedded with the organization. His father was an accountant at one of the temples in London. That's for, such a weird lie. Did he just think it was like a better story to yeah, sell? Maybe just, you know. Is it possible it's harmless and he's just trying to tell, he's like, this is a better story for my mythos. Yeah, that's certainly possible. I mean, only Jay knows the reason why he would, you know, create this self-mythology about himself. Mm -hmm. um, but because he wouldn't give me an interview when, mm -hmm. when I requested. So is when, that, did he know your angle before or after when you yeah. requested? He did. So kind of taking a step back. At first, when I found all of these kind of Reddit threads being like, hey, Jay, this guy's not who he says he is. I went back to Esquire and was like, look, I know you guys were looking for a fluffy profile of this guy, but all I have right now is a lot of smoke. It's no fire. I will admit I don't have the goods yet, but it seems like there's a lot here to warrant taking a deeper look in this. And they shut it down. They were like, we want nothing to do with this. They were not interested in running an investigation, so they killed the piece. Can I ask you, and, uh, do they pay, so yeah. how does the, it work? Do they pay you for your time up until that point? Typically, so good question. I hadn't submitted a draft yet. So if you submit a draft and then the publication is like, yeah, we don't like this, we're not going to run it. Typically, they'll pay you like 50%. Okay. But I had not done that. So they paid me. They were really concerned about the editors at Esquire were really concerned about running afoul of GA's PR agency. And the PR agency, uh, you know, if you write poorly about one of their clients, they can be like, yeah, we're never letting you talk to any of our clients. Who's that PR? I, I need a PR. I need those kind of PR, man. I need called scary. A, a lot. 
Align PR. I'm going to connect. Align, I need you. We need <laughs> so if you skip. look, Align PR also <laughs> represents Matthew. Yeah. They also represent Matthew McConaughey. I think they're really is, brave. Hey, look, come on. He doesn't, his own self-help bullshit now. Yeah, he's a self-help grifter now, too. That's the right. whole thing. Man, yeah. I tell you, I, got, I now that I think about it, I think I could teach people some things. <laughs> yeah. I'm about the, to align the, myself. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? I'm, three school. I'm so sorry. I have to use the restroom so bad. Okay. I'm going to run and I'll be right back and then we'll continue the conversation. Cool. Uh, apologies. Let me ask you, do you have any opinions or are you familiar with Gary V? Ooh, good. I've met Gary V before. You have? Uh, I, I, yeah. Uh, grabbed wings and played darts with him at South hmm. by Southwest uh years back so before before i was like a magazine writer i wrote for advertising age i basically i covered i was a media reporter i covered okay. the media industry and yeah obviously gary is a fixture within the media uh and at that time he was getting his advertising agency off the ground and so was being very kind of heavily applauded within mm -hmm. the advertising industry at that point he had it morphed into this you know what public speaker it, influencer yeah. type of guy that he is now and again i thought you know kind of corny but ultimately kind of har probably pretty harmless mm -hmm. uh he's obviously he's taken a different uh road since then yeah. um with gary i mean he's obviously you know just shares a bunch of banal platitudes uh online that to any discerning person you know they would appear hollow which they are but has gary you know lied about who he is mm. i i don't know you know mm -hmm. I, I mean it's just different levels and this is not a defense of gary you know I, I the whole kind of influencer hustle is not something i'm interested in defending but yeah with jay i think it's just a, it's a different level yeah mm -hmm. different perspectives yeah i yeah. was I was a, a Gary Vee fan for a while, and then uh, as more stuff came out, I'm sorry I missed the beginning of the conversation, but with the V no, friends and a few other things, kind of lost me. Well, the thing with Gary, and I think there's overlap with Jay and his life coaching school, mm -hmm. is now everyone thinks they're just going to be this wildly successful mm -hmm. entrepreneur, yeah. and that they're going to get to make their own hours. You know, they're going to they're going to this hustle culture thing, where they're just going to be able to you know, make six figures, doing some fake email job, working remotely, traveling to Bali, you know, yeah. sending emails from beside the pool. And it's like, life isn't <laughs> like that. I mean, the crypto is the same thing. It's like, there's this entire generation of people that think they're going to take the shortcut right. to success, which by virtue of my job as a journalist, I've interviewed a lot of successful people. And by and large, successful people are people who worked really hard for a long period of time until they broke through. <laughs> it's just not, yeah. it's not as simple as these people make it seem. It's not like you get a life coaching certification and all of a sudden you're making 150 grand, you know, giving people unlicensed therapy through Zoom. <laughs> right. Which is, you know, what the life Ooh. coaching hustle kind of is. Wow. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so just while Ethan is gone, I, I'll just say yeah. I went to Esquire Esquire killed the story. They didn't want anything to do with it. They kind of paid me some money to agree to kind of go away and agree that I wouldn't use anything really? from the interview. Yeah. Wow. It, a, a small amount. I mean, not a lot. I mean, there's not a lot of money in journalism to begin with. Uh, but they were just like, look, we'll pay you a kill fee, even though they technically didn't owe me one because I never submitted a, an article for them to even kill. It got killed before it even got to that stage. Um, but I told them, I was like, you know, I'm going to take this, I'm going to shop this around. I'm, I'm an independent journalist. I, I work as a contractor for publications, but I don't have any exclusivity with Esquire or any other publication. And so then I shopped it around. I ended up selling it to the Hollywood reporter and then it got killed again, again. for, for <laughs> wow. a second time. Oh my God. Uh, was Jay's that, was, publicist. Yeah. Okay. Talk some shit to the editors there and kind wow. of portrayed me as an unethical reporter. And they were like, look, we want nothing to do with this. But eventually I found a good home with The Guardian, which I 
cannot tell you how grateful I am mm. for them because, you know, Jason, you know, is between his publicists and his lawyers, he was pretty aggressively trying to get this story killed. And yeah, they, they stood tall. They resisted it. So UK press. Yeah. <laughs> They're much more open to, uh, I'm surprised <laughs> that they have such like, um, such so much power over the the reports that actually go out like i'm surprised they don't want a story if it's true that they don't want a story just because it's negative you know i mean yeah you would think but it's also kind of a function of the state of journalism and the industry Mm -hmm. just being at such a low point right now this kind of work again i've been working on this for a year and obviously there were lulls in the work you know, I wasn't working heads down nonstop yeah. 24-7 for a year straight. Uh, but stuff like this takes time mm-hmm. and takes money and mm-hmm. it's labor intensive. And with a lot of publications struggling, um, a lot of them are like, look, it's just not worth their time. Mm. And it's not worth the potential legal fees if there is ever uh, a, sure, a legal yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's a calculation on their part as to whether or not that's they true. want to do it. But yeah. The reason why I went to uh, The Guardian is because I read a previous piece in The Guardian about Jay. And the author of that piece had since become the features editor. And I could tell that he was a little slippery. And I was like, or I could tell that he was skeptical of Jay just mm-hmm. by the wording of some of the stuff. So I sent him an email and he was like, you know, I always thought there was something a little hmm. shifty about that guy. And uh, by then I had done a ton of background research and created a, a very detailed timeline showing why, just showing that by Jay's own statements, his story couldn't be true. I mean, <laughs> Jay, is he's such a sloppy liar that he has contradicted himself and the timeline of events, you know, throughout his, you know, in, between his books and his many, many interviews, he, you know, he couldn't keep his own story straight. So I want to get more into detail of some of this stuff specifically. Before sure. that, though, coincidentally, this somebody posted is- this to our subreddit. Jay Shetty's been running ads on our fucking show, which is great. <laughs> I love that about him. Keep it. You know what I mean? Like the, uh, beggars can't oh, be choosers. Wait, I, John, I'm sorry. We're going to have to kill this interview. Uh, it turns out um, oh, Jay's gotcha, actually yeah. paying us right now. Jay, keep it coming, please. Cut them off. Here's uh, Jay. Let's see what he's selling. This is for... Does it say free training? That's not what it's called, is it? I mean, let's see. Then this message is for you. In short, I've set a goal for myself to help change the lives of one billion people around the world. Modest. <laughs> but I can't do it alone. I'm looking for someone who is genuinely willing to learn and grow and wants to help others do the same. If that sounds like you, then I want to show you how you could turn your passion for helping and empowering others into a rewarding new career. Yeah, this, this is like the most red what? flag shit That's ever. That's such huh. a red flag. Like, pay me so I can teach you how oh, to make money. And let me and guess, you people. make money by recruiting other people yes. to make money. But this is so what? slimy. Like, you can't be self help You're very, yeah. <laughs> you uh, cannot do it. Very astute. Very astute. So... Well, we're, we're, we can get into the life coaching stuff. Or, yeah, so let, or, let me let me go. Uh, out. There's a few yeah. things specifically I'll ask you about. <clears throat> um, so his backstory is suspicious. His monk credentials are right. suspicious. Then we get into the um, the well, accredit, accredit, that, you know, he, he Go ahead. He claims to have spent three years in India. Mm-hmm. In you know contacting those people through Reddit, I ended up talking to a bunch of people who are from uh, the. From ISKCON, which is short for the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, kind of more colloquially known as the Hare Krishna movement. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with Hare Krishnas, but they used to dress in orange robes and they would be out in public chanting Hare Krishna, which is their mantra. Um, they were once very kind of visible in the culture and kind of mocked, but they've since kind of gone underground because they have a deeply controversial history, you know. Hmm. Child sexual abuse, Mm. corporal abuse of children, uh, you know, marrying girls off to men Mm. twice their age, uh, you know, conspiracy to quit, commit murder. There's an excellent uh, 
All the greatest hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the greatest hits for a religious organization. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, there's an excellent uh, documentary on Peacock about them. Oh, I love oh. What's it called? Do you know? Yeah. I, I don't we'll remember. Find, we'll look it up. We'll look yeah, it up. yeah, you can find it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to go back to the, so the J. Yeah. Shetty University, which costs seven thousand four hundred dollars per term, um, they claim that they offer qualifications equivalent to a master's degree, um, despite what you found to be some problems with their accredit accreditation uh, claims. So what did you find yeah. out about that claim? I really have to give credit on this to my editor at Sam Wolfson because the the life coaching school, my original take on it was that it's a pyramid scheme, which we can kind of get into later. But he was like, well, do we even know that it's accredited? So he was the one who really urged me to look into that. And if you look on their marketing materials, actually, I mean, they've since wiped this from the Internet. But he was saying that the Jay Shetty Certification School which is Jay's life coaching school, was affiliated with different universities in the UK. And he named four different universities specifically. I contacted all of those universities and every single one was like, we have nothing to do with Jay Shetty. We have never heard of the Jay Shetty certification school. Mm. We don't know why we're on his website. That's we will be super con- crazy. I, that was when it became really easy to show people that he was up to something yeah. no good. Again, you can wave your hand. You could be like, look, he, you know, he fibbed a little bit about his backstory. Every self-help influencer does it. But when you are falsely advertising your for-profit That's a lie. Yeah, that's a school, scam. Yeah, that's really bad. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, you know. Well, can I ask you, it, if, if he, so he says he's affiliated with all these universities. And the claim was that, I guess, you could take his um, course, take it to one of these universities and, like, resume a master's course or something. So yeah. That's so, crazy. So was there any students, though, that attempted that that were, like, shut down? Not that I found. I mean, they might be out there. But, uh, you know, I did speak to some graduates from the school. Um, but none of them were attending with the intention of, you know, trying to earn some kind of master's degree. Right. But, uh, you know, he specifically said the University of Chichester, or Chichester, as us Americans would say, uh, would, that completing the Jay Shetty certification school would help you obtain, would be kind of the first step towards obtaining an MBA at that university. Wow. I contacted the university, and <coughs> the CMO of the university gave a pretty scathing rebuttal on the record in the piece. He was like, we're very unhappy we're being mentioned by them. We want our names taken off and we will be contacting them immediately to have that done. So every single one of these uh, institutions distanced themselves and uh, from, from the school, including I, the regulatory agency that is supposed to accredit. Right, that was the, the other part. Ofqual, yeah. I don't know how to say that. Ofqual? Ofqual. Ofqual yeah. as a regulatory agency in the UK, right? Yeah. Um, that mm-hmm. um, they are a private exam certification company that evaluates and certifies accredit accreditation accreditations. Why is that word so weird for me to say? <laughs> Accredit accreditation accredit accreditations. Yeah. <laughs> it's the D I T. The double D A T. Yeah, accredited. Yeah, yeah. It's like no. Yeah. yeah. Accreditation accreditations. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um, it also claims that Ofqual, um, which regulates all exams for schools and universities, approved the qualifications according to their school's brochure. So that was an outright lie. I emailed Ofqual and I was like, can you tell me more about your accreditation process, specifically as it pertains to the Jay Shetty Certification School? And they sent me the statement, which is in the article. Yeah, I mean, you can I have it, it here. Have it or do yeah, we have please. it here? Is this it? It should be in the article. I think we quoted them directly. AV, is this it here? Or which one is it? Can you highlight it? It says, um, oh, uh, that's their direct quote? Yeah. Ofqual said it does not regulate the school's accreditation. An, off, an Ofqual spokesman wrote that the organization would be contacting the school to have references to Ofqual removed from their website. 
Was that it? Oh, so we didn't we didn't include the full quote, but I'm happy to <laughs> yeah, share the does. email I received with you. Yeah, sure. Love that. Um, but the, I get the idea too at the same time. Right. But I, I do yeah. encourage everybody to do this. It's a good read, a good long read. Um, the Guardian. It's on the Guardian, and it's called. I'll put, um, Jay I'll put a link to the article in the uh, episode description right now for anybody who wants to go read. Nice, it. good read. Yeah. Uncovering the higher truth of Jay Shetty. Yeah, I mean, it's all there. The other thing that kind of surprised me was that he's getting dogged by his ex. Yeah, <laughs> Chaitanya. Yes. How did that come about? So I started contacting these people on Reddit, and uh, there were a number of people who are from the Hare Krishna community in London, uh, British Indians who grew up in the Hare Krishna faith, um, good people, decent people who were like, look, I cannot go on the record trashing Jay Shetty as much as I would want to because I will be ostracized from my community. Mm -hmm. But trust that you are on, you're on the right track. Everything you're doing, your instincts are correct. And they, throughout this entire process, I mean, I developed kind of friendships with these people because I've been talking to them for a year. They would kind of direct me into the, in the right direction and be like, you should look into this. Okay, this claim doesn't quite make sense. And then one day out of the blue, I got uh, a WhatsApp message, and I don't typically use WhatsApp, but in uh, overseas, it's kind of the preferred messaging yeah. platform um, from a woman being like, hey, I heard you're writing about Jay Shetty. I mean, I didn't even know it was a woman, um, but in this person was like, hey, I heard you're writing about Jay, can I talk to you? And then I was like, sure why not you know i at this point i was following every single lead mm -hmm. that i could find um which kind of kind of put me on jay's radar because i had contacted so many people from his past mm. and got back to him that i was mm -hmm. investigating and that's why he was trying trying so hard to get this thing shut down before he could even you know see the light of day but i jump on the phone with this woman and it was and i was like well how do you know jay she's like oh i'm his ex-girlfriend and that's when I, uh, you know, that was kind of a, a big, a, a big moment in this investigation. There were all these kind of different points where I was like, you know, I, I have another, I have something else that will make this even more, even stronger. And obviously somebody who knew Jay that closely uh, talking to me was good, but she did not want it. She did not want to go on the record until out of nowhere, just, we had finished the piece we were putting the final touches on it and days before we were, you know, getting ready to go to publication, she came to me and she was like, I want to go on the record. You know, she had uh, agonized over that decision for many, many months, but eventually decided it was something she wanted to do. Did she, did she mention if something happened that changed her mind or was it just something she thought had thought about a lot? She is a licensed psychotherapist and she does <coughs> not like the idea of someone like Jay giving people mental health guidance um, that is unlicensed and unregulated. Mm. And I think that was her primary motivation. So um, but, what, what is know, it she told ahead. you? What is it she, she uh, I guess, uh, told you that, that uh, brought new light to Jay's story or character? So I'm talking to all these people who are part of this religious community. And they were like, look, Jay's story all of them told me on background, which is they didn't want to be on the record. All of them told me on background, they're like, Jay's story that he spent three years in India is bullshit. He was in, he was in England the vast majority of the time. He went to India for a few months. It's not like he was never there. But he was in Watford, which is a suburb of London. And he was staying at Bhakti Vedanta Manor, which is this huge, sprawling Tudor estate that acts as the headquarters for... ISKCON, the International Society for Christian Consciousness, or the Hare Christian Movement. Fun fact, Bhakti Vedanta Manor was gifted to the Hare Christian Movement by George Harris. He bought I it for oh, wow. the, oh. the church. Yeah. Shout out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if I you can't say I don't a bad know, word about him. Yeah. I mean, but if, if, if you, you guys are George, yeah. If you do the cool right. Domino's meme, you could do Beatles. George Harrison that, that, that. writes, George Harrison travels yeah. to India <laughs> to Jay Shetty's downtown. Yeah, Jay Shetty. Uh, yeah. Yes. That's There's good. a clear line between thank the you, Beatles thank and you. Jay Shetty. In a sense, uh, you might even say uh, George Harrison was a friend of the show. <laughs> yeah, there you go. 
Well, I don't know how we feel about us, you know, exposing his former religious uh, community. He would but like he it. was uh, he got into Hare Krishna uh, towards the end of the Beatles run. If in fact, I mean, it sounds like you're a fan, Ethan. Did you watch the Get Back documentary? Was that the, the Peter Jackson one? one? Yeah. Oh, I haven't yeah. actually seen that you one. You still yet. didn't watch it? I told you. No, you it I've like just been so times. fucking busy. I haven't seen a movie in like years. <sighs> Ethan, <laughs> I've seen it. John, Dan's seen it's it. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, very early in the first episode, uh, George brings a Hare Krishna devotee to the recording studio, mm. and you kind of you see him in there. So he was heavily involved with the church, and also the song uh, "My Sweet Lord" by George Harrison. Mm -hmm. Which he, you know, off of his first solo record after he left the Beatles, he chants Hare Krishna. Yeah, uh, yeah. in right. the song. Yeah. Uh, so so okay. Anyways. So the Hare Krishna thing is sounding kind of cult-like. I didn't know that about it. That accusation has been made about Hare Krishna, but I don't want to say that myself. I mean, I've talked to a lot of people who are from that faith. You know, the Krishna consciousness religion dates back millennia. I mean, like Hinduism and the, the religious texts that it's founded upon are some of the oldest religious texts in existence. It's not the religion itself is not any more of a cult than Christianity, Judaism, Islam. That organization, however, does have a controversial past. So, mm. you know, it's kind of like the Catholic Church versus the teachings of Jesus. Catholic mm. Church. I grew up Catholic. Deeply problematic history, right? But mm -hmm. the teachings of Je Jesus, <coughs> we love generally him. a pretty chill guy. We love Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And he loves us, <laughs> apparently. So they say. So they say. Um, right. So, so his, girl, his ex called in and said basically, as a health, mental health professional, that she was, uh, he was providing inaccurate and potentially dangerous mental health guidance. Yeah. So that's it. There you go. So would we call Jay Shetty a total fraud, a mild fraud, <laughs> or on a fraud scale one to ten? Where what are we giving him? Yeah, I mean I I want to be careful with what I say because Yeah, I'm I mean, trying to get you, you know, in trouble. Yeah. I let but you uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't I won't force you. I mean well, I, you you we were the version that you have seen is the very toned down version of the initial draft I submitted for Obvious legal reasons. Um, you know, we don't use that term at all in mm -hmm. the article. Uh, we've just very simply lay out all the evidence that I was able to accumulate over the course of my investigation. And I think smart <coughs> readers can, can put two and two together. Okay, yeah, Jay says sure. that he wasn't involved spiritually until 2007. He had never met a monk until 2007. Well, here is an interview he did with an ISKCON publication saying that he went to this trip in 2006. Here's a video of him from 2006. I can kind of imagine uh, what Jay would, would say to you. He would say something like this. Who, if, I, if I stole some memes or something silly like that when I was coming up, or if I lied about my backstory a little, or fudged it a little bit, who cares? Like, I'm, I'm doing my thing now. I'm speaking. I'm making original content. I'm helping people. You know, I'm interviewing the president. I'm, I'm, I'm become this real person. So why do you care about these, these minor details that happened in the past? And I would say, well, how did you get there? What was it founded on? Mm -hmm. Founded on stealing other people's content, founding upon uh, grossly exaggerating your qualifications, founded upon creating this origin story that appears to not have any merit. Uh, again, when people, and I think this is why, you know, Part of what's so amazing to me is that I should not have been the one to have written this article. The fact that no one got to this before me right. is mm -hmm. kind of shocking to me because the plagiarism stuff, that was out in the public for years. Because he has and, some kind of weird thing going on with like yeah. his, he's captivated he, the minds of all these like rich and famous celebrities. Yeah. And it's just bizarre. But I think the fact that he has all these famous friends, that he has such a big platform, that he's so famous, people just assume, well, he has to be legitimate. How right. would he get to this point? Uh, you know, it becomes kind of self-reinforcing, right, at a certain point mm -hmm. where just by the sheer, you know, by sheer fame, people think you're legitimate. And no one ever bothered to wonder, it's like, well, 
what did we actually know about this guy? Mm-hmm. You know, no one ever was like, does the emperor have no clothes on, actually? Yeah, I wonder what people would think if they could all see that, um, that freestyle rap. It wasn't that bad, actually. It wasn't that bad. It's kind of funny. I, <laughs> I do want he's that. A talented, he's a talented guy. I mean, to your point, right. he's a good interviewer. People like his podcast. Yeah. The podcast thing is really what's kind of put him over the top and kind of elevated him to a new level of fame because he gets all these famous people on there and he is an, an engaging viewer, you know, Sam's or a an engaging fan, speaker. Apparently. <laughs> Sam? Sam loves Jay Shetty. I mean, the real story here is that is that Americans will believe anything delivered in a posh London accent. True. The That's accent like, and those eyes do those so eyes much do for a him. Lot of work. Be honest. When you first yeah. saw his eyes, what did you think? I was staring so intently into his <laughs> eyes to try to see if he was wearing contacts. Um, I think... Uh, I, don't I, want... I can't find any evidence of that. I know that's what everyone wants to know, but you know. but no, he has gorgeous <laughs> eyes. It's really something. It really, it is. is. It's a great. It's a great package. Yeah. And you right. know what's interesting is that in on his during his stage show and in his first book, Think Like a Monk, Jay has a section and a segment on the the stage show dedicated to how an attractive package can you know, give us rose colored glasses. It can color our perception of something mm-hmm. where, you know, yes. I, and this is, a, this is a very common psychological, uh, uh, you know, trope that if someone's more attractive, you know, they tend to do better in the corporate world. We tend to have just a, a better opinion of people just based on their physical attractiveness. Mm. And that applies to Jay more so fun. than any. Yeah. 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 He's so hot. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't, I, yeah. I don't want to make you uncomfortable, man. I would, I would, I would. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, don't do it. But I, I'm respecting I mean, you. A, um, I'm respecting you. Uh, this was my ass. Um, but guys, if you want to read the whole article, once again, it's on the Guardian, and it's in the description of the in episode. In the description, now. uncovering the higher truth of Jay Shetty, written by um, the great John McDermott, who once profiled me, and he and this is a shrewd guy. He doesn't do take profiles lightly. Clearly, and from what I understand. It was a very good. Pro- you thought I was awesome, glowing, just in nothing. But <laughs> See, and Jay, I mean Jay, uh, do the math. I'm glowing. You fucking suck. <laughs> Case closed. John, John McDermott. <laughs> Thank Thanks you so much, calling, John. John. Is there anything you want to plug yeah. or talk about before? before uh, you- if you're not the type of person who wants to sit down and read a six thousand word article, I kind of broke down the article into kind of more digestible bits on my Instagram. So you'll see a kind of a story highlight there. Oh, that's, and that's uh, I'll link that too. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll send you my Instagram handle and I'll send you my Twitter handle too. My Twitter is just at McDermott, you know, if and on, and on Instagram, it. it's Johnny McD with two underscores in between. There you go. Johnny McD. Johnny McD. Okay, Thanks cool. for calling. It was so nice to connect uh, with you to talk about this. It really, Really made this whole conversation um, very interesting. So I appreciate you. Well, yeah, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. All right, have a great right, day. Thanks, nice John. to see you again, my old friend, John McDermott. <laughs> <laughs> see you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.